Lion face. Arr, Arr. Lemon face. Ooh. <laughs> Que onda, worldwide fans of cinema. You got Jaime and Fuego here with my co-host. Cecil Laird, what up? Dan Rizzle for another installment of In Fuego Tainment. And this week we are pumped to be talking about this film because it kind of came out of nowhere. It was under some radars and dude, Turbo Kid was the shiznittle bam. Snip, snap, snip. As you may know, the situation is critical. We have reached maximum casualty level. <laughs> Who exactly are you supposed to be? This is it, soldier. We have to hit these sand machines with everything we've got. Find them, kill them, and lead back their heads on pikes. I'm meeting up with an old mate. We're gonna strike the Zeus. Ah, what do you say? Let's roll. Absolutely. Turbo Kid was, uh, I wouldn't even say a surprise because the trailer, we were like, ooh, this is gonna be good. Yeah. And I tell you what, it just lived up to the expectations. Yeah. It might very well be my favorite summer movie. Yeah, it might have leapfrogged Ant-Man, I must say, because mm -hmm. that was what leapfrogged Jurassic World for us. Yep. And mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah, man, it was tremendous. And we actually, to do a, a shameless plug, we did a trailer reaction to this for mm -hmm. The Horror Show, which is our project together. So, Absolutely. So yeah, it was under a lot of radars for people who don't follow mainstream cinema, is what I mean. And that's what yeah. we usually cover for this show. Or people that don't follow independent cinema, really, yeah. because yeah, it's it's definitely not one that you might not it's definitely one that you might not have heard of if you're not sort of uh, following, you know, the the more underground yeah, sort and, of film scene, and we've all done like big blockbusters so far this year, you know, like mm -hmm. Avengers and you know Mad Max and stuff like that. So you know, we this is the first smaller film that we've actually tackled for mm -hmm. this show. So we even had to go to a single independent theater to go see it. Yeah, um, on shout the last out to showing. Film Bar. Though. Yeah, yeah, Film that Bar in cool. Phoenix, Arizona. If you guys have never been there, um, they show some really cool stuff, and it's a nice little location, comfy, comfy chairs. We got the comfiest. Which yeah. Is nice. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think you can even bring drinks and stuff like that yeah. into the theater. So yeah, they have beer. All the better. It's, it's pretty awesome, <laughs> I must say. So it's a it, it's a pretty righteous place. But mm -hmm. uh, here on In Fuego Tain, man, if you have seen us before or if you're new to the proceedings, we like to do the bueno, zimbalo, and the feo. Yeah, that's right. The good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and I must say, this film was wrought with good, obviously. Mm -hmm. Tons of bueno, mucho bueno, as mm -hmm. I like to say. So since uh, I have a lot to say, I'm going to let Cecil take it away here first. Okay. My first and largest bueno is definitely the actor or actress, actress I should say. Yes. Well, they like to be called actors now. Do they now? Yes, they do. No, we uh, don't want to have anything be gender specific anymore exactly. because they're, they're all our tours. So. But um, the actress uh, Lawrence LaBeouf is phenomenal. Or is, it, is it LaBeouf? LaBeouf, who knows, <laughs> who knows. But um, Definitely French Canadian whatever it name. is, she stole the movie. The and, and that's not it. to say that everyone else was bad in it. She just was such a shining star in this movie that anytime she was on screen, I was smiling. I was too. And, and she's all smiley too. She's so smiling the sense. whole time too. It was it was just phenomenal. It was just this this vein of happiness that Her was constantly present. Was contagious, man. Oh, 100%. I felt happy anytime she was on screen. A hundred percent. From the very first sort of oh, out of nowhere sort of uh, appearance to yeah, the... Yeah, it was very random as you see in the oh, trailer. <laughs> man, but, but it was so great and she was just so amazing. She was fantastic for the main kid to bounce off of, which literally they just refer to him as the kid in yeah, the movie. good interplay. Her name is Apple, but you never get a name for him. No, know? no, but but Apple, she was she was amazing. Like, and And let's just say that the time frame that they put it in is definitely square in the 80s. We laughed so hard when they, it's in the beginning of the film, no spoilers here obviously, but they're like, the distant future. 1997. <laughs> well, we spoiled it, so yeah. that's a funny joke there. Yeah, I must it's say. hilarious. It was it, so 80s in It was that such aspect. a setup, but yeah. This actress was so amazing, and now I'm saying actress even though. Nah. But, uh, <laughs> but she was so amazing that it just brought the movie to a whole nother level. And the movie wasn't, it wasn't bad or it wasn't struggling. It was a really solid movie mm -hmm. even up until that point. But when she came on, it just made this jump that was like... It was like a whole new world. Oh my goodness. She, she has a big future ahead of her, even yeah. though she was... Um, a good deal older than we both thought. Yeah, she we looked thought she was like she was young. like 19, but yeah, she's, born she's in actually 85. about 10 she's years like, older than that. Yeah, yeah. she's like 30. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, but she was amazing. So that is my biggest 
and first and foremost bueno of this movie. Jaime, yeah. what's your first bueno? You know, the first bueno for me is the fact that the music set the tone so perfectly. Oh, One of my amazing. favorite soundtracks, you know, even though a lot of people ragged on It Follows, including myself, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people who loved it, and specifically for the score, this might actually beat It Follows for the best score for me. I 100% agree. There were times, yeah. uh, listen, I was sitting right next to you, and I felt under my feet your toe taps, you yeah. know? Because I'm a drummer, and so the music was just getting me into it. I started well, we, we were and, both bopping and, yeah. and you could see the you know again it was a smaller independent theater so there wasn't a huge crowd but people were getting into it they, they were. their heads were bopping and the music just would pump you up like it was very 80s, very retro, yeah. but in the best possible way. It almost felt like Kung Fury mishmashed with Mad Max, and dare I say, this was better than Mad Max. Oh, 100%. I had better a than Fury fun. Road. Yeah, yeah. And it's Mad Max with bicycles. Yeah. Which seems so <laughs> silly, but it just lends to the humor of it because you see these badass dudes that you're supposed to be scared of, Throwing and they're riding their BMXs and, and shit <laughs> like that. Or, sorry. No. They're riding their BMXs and stuff like that, and it's just. It just lends itself to this this silliness. The but, quirkiness of this film right. was like way up there, but in the best possible fashion. 100%. Now, I'm going to move on to my second bueno. And there's a lot of bueno in this, but I'll yeah. try and not overdo it. We're going to have to rein it in and eventually be like open-minded critics and now, stuff like that. Now, part of why we reviewed it as, or why we did a trailer reaction for the horror show is because there was an ample amount of gore. Indeed. And it was cheesy, schlocky, but... Just golden gore, like I was probably waiting for the Feo for that, but yeah, it was a, it was of the good variety. That is so, Very but that's fulfilling. why I like, you know, that's the thing. There's a lot of horror movies that just fall short for me because there's not a lot of gore in this one. This I couldn't even, even really call a it a movie. horror movie, yeah, right? Right. Which is why it was actually perfect for Enfuego Tain. Yeah, Cecil yielded it to me, even though we were kind of on the fence initially. We were like, should this be a horror show review? But, it could be. It could yeah. be either way, but it definitely was more of a sort of an action '80s throwback comedy exactly. than than a horror movie. But so I got the it. gore. <laughs> the gore was super prevalent, Big and time. it was done like really. And again, a lot of people might think it's cheesy gore, but it's cheesy. It's meant to be cheesy. Yeah, it's, it's so it's over the top. The Every wound thing. sprays like a river. Yeah, and and it's just so fun to see though. Yeah, and, yeah. Growing and, up playing stuff like Mortal Kombat and things like that. And let me just the say, ultimate yeah, film for that type of fame. for sure. And without spoiling, but. When halves of people get involved, <laughs> it is crazy and hilarious. Yes, very hilarious. And the film was funny throughout. They kept the momentum going. It never really dragged. It, it, started it really did. Maybe, maybe it the really slightest didn't. bit slow, but once, hey, once uh, that, that babe Apple got on screen and she was like the perfect She's like, in the, quirky in the babe, first 15 you know? minutes. Uh, yeah. The first 15 minutes. It's not even, I can't even call it a slog. It yeah. was just setting up the world. Yeah. It's world building. Exactly right. Because it's a post-apocalyptic where acid rain has ruined the entire world's landscape. Yeah. In and it's a wasteland, <laughs> very much like Mad Max. Yeah. Everyone has to ride bikes because I'm assuming there's no fuel. And yeah. not only is there no fuel, but there's very little water. Yeah. Like a lot of the movie has to do with the quest for water or yeah. how people attain water. And perhaps that's a fail that we can get into too at some point, the way water is extracted in yeah. a few scenes. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's definitely <laughs> interesting, which yeah. I don't know, is is the villain one of your buenos? Because You know, I thought Ironside was solid enough. Michael but, Ironside, um, if yeah, you guys don't Michael know. Michael Ironside, that's he right. He played the villain, the the one-eyed villain that was extremely over the top, but yeah. extremely fun to watch. Oh yeah, he was good. He did, but honestly the villain that stole the show for me and is another bueno for me is dude with the crazy Skull metal face. mask. Yeah. yeah, throwing those blades around. He was largely quiet too. He was he, he was sort say, of a mute character. Anything, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. He like his crazy. reaction Actions all had to be like, you know, slapping something when he was yeah. upset, and and it was all body language for him. Right, and there was a lot, and, and it was really well done too, because you'd see his head like just quick little movements, and and, and that would get across so yeah. much. Yeah, and that takes good acting too. You know, it's not all about like you know vocal inflection and stuff like that. Body language really indicates things pretty well. So. Yeah, one hundred percent. So yeah. uh, there's tons of more bueno that we could discuss, but, but I don't know that we, we have a lot of time. Exactly for it. right. Yeah. So we're, we're not going to keep it to two minutes or anything like that, but. You know, we had a lot of bueno to gush about today. And so we have to eventually mention some Malo. The, for me, I mean, maybe, and, and I'm stretching it here, maybe the fact that so many other post apocalyptic kind of films have been done before and it's kind of a 
topic that you've seen, but they they did so well with it as far as it, making it, it their own, giving yeah. it their own flavor and style. I can't even I can't even agree that that's necessarily a mala. Like again, even you, it's just like a tried thing. and true. We did story, the same thing you know? with Ant Man when yeah. we're trying to find mala. Your mala is still Resting ultimately a positive. It is, it's still yeah. ultimately a bueno because you're like, yeah, it's been done before, but they put their twist on it and it made yeah. it good. So I even mean, the mala isn't really a mala, and I'm just gonna flat out say. I can't pinpoint a Malo for this movie. I just you can't. It that much. It's for the over... first time in all of our Enfuegotainment reviews, I cannot pinpoint a Malo. It's over 90% on Rotten Tomatoes for a good reason. For it's a, a damn good reason. It's a damn good reason. <laughs> I it's a damn really good reason and a damn good film. You know, really we're not dropping is. up bombs here, kitties, so you know, everything's okay, but yeah. <laughs> but I, I tell you what, I, um, I yeah. have one that comes to mind. Okay, you know? go ahead. Go I ahead. Because I can't. I can't think of anything. I thought that I was really racking my brain for this one. I thought maybe the connection between Turbo Kid and the villain. We've seen it before. I mean, dare I say a little Batman? Bit, little you know, bit. Dare I say Batman? Yeah, you know, the original okay. Batman Fair film. Enough. You know, at least Fair as far enough. as what, what happened with his parents and everything. That's and that lends back. To but the even fact that, that was done. Ideas very we've well. seen before, but they put their own twist on it. So. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And and in fact, in fact, towards the end of the movie, when there was the recognition factor, mm -hmm. it kind of came that out actually, of nowhere. It went yeah. by really fast. Yeah. But it was, you know, that's the thing. They weren't leaning on it like a crutch. No, you no, know what I mean? It was just a little bit of backstory. They spaced everything really well. Mm-hmm. I gotta mm -hmm. say. Yeah, you know, I'd again. say maybe I, I wanted more of the funny New Zealand cowboy guy. He was kind of cool. He, he actually, was pretty fun. He actually reminded me of uh, Roland Deschain. I actually had a lot of, uh, you know, when are talking about the wastelands and everything, mm -hmm. I caught a lot of Dark Tower influence in certain aspects of this film. I'll be, uh, I'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. Me and my mispronunciation that my friend here likes to always give me crap about. Um, I, I saw lots of similarities there. You know, it was. Yeah. Uh, it was cool, and I wanted more of him. So maybe that's one of the only Malos that I can think of beyond what I'm not I quite earlier. enough New Zealand cowboy. Yeah, exactly. Because mm -hmm. this was a this was a co like co promoted co uh, you know produced film between Canada and New Zealand. So mm -hmm. we're talking polar opposites as far as like areas of the world, but. Maybe those two influences coming together is what made something so so buoyant. It was so, super special. Yeah, super special. And I'm I'm gonna stick with not throwing out a, a Malo out there because I just rightfully so I honestly just can't think of it like it, it wasn't really slow at any point yeah. and and again I'm gonna go back to my bueno Lawrence LaBeouf LaBeouf whatever you want to say um, Apple was she just brought so much joy to every scene that she was in that it, it just it, I struggled to hate anything that was in those scenes and yeah. especially I'm just gonna mention one thing and, and it might be a spoiler, it might not, but keep your eyes out for the gnome stick. Ah, this is my gnome stick. Oh my stick. god, <laughs> so great. She, like, she just radiated joy, and because she was on screen so much, I found it hard to hate on anything in this movie. Truly. And so we're gonna segue into the Feo now. It's really rough trying to think of something, obviously, I mean, the kills are probably one of the few that yeah, actually comes to mind. Yeah, I think it could fall mind, in that category, you know? even though the well, because for me, I'm a horror fan. A lot of fan. them are, are pretty brutal for a movie that's so just kind of goof-tastic and stuff. But that actually lends well, that's itself. That's part of to, why it yeah. works out that they're so goofy. You know, yeah. like like they're okay. So for one, someone the top of someone's head gets cut, and that's it's it, like swirling around. It it's swirls so great. around <laughs> and it spins like a top until he falls over. So it's a little silly, but. It's so fun to watch. It's so appropriate for the world. Totally. And I mean, maybe another Feo is that a film which was so amazing did not get a wider release. That, you know? that is a That's legitimate Feo. Definite Feo. Definite legitimate you know? Feo. Because it's on VOD right now, so all you guys can watch it as you watch this review or like please, right after. Like, yeah, please finish do. the review first. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Uh, I'm not going to talk but, myself down like that. But then <laughs> go and buy Turbo Kid. And I don't even suggest renting it. I suggest purchasing it, it because you purchase. will want, you'll watch it yourself. I guarantee this, as an Enfuegotainment regular, you will watch this movie and you will want to have friends over to then watch it again with you. I guarantee it. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was a little forceful on that. He was, he was, as he should be though, you know, because it was that awesome. It's, it's that good. I mean, I 100%, here's the thing, Jaime and I were talking not too long ago. We're both gonna probably pass on um, purchasing Mad Max yeah. Fury Road, and I must say because it was though, okay, yeah, even, but it was it was hugely critically acclaimed. Yeah, and but it that's, just that's the more fail, man, is the fact that the big budget film got all of the acclaim and all the praise. And while Mad Max was good, I felt that this film was better, and that is definitely an ugly. The fact that 
the smaller, you know, engine that could, you know, even though it's over 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and all that other stuff, it, I, I feel like this film deserves more attention. And, and as such, we will purchase Turbo Kid as yes. soon as it becomes available. Absolutely. 100%. Can't wait for that Blu-ray. I'll buy the Blu-ray. Yeah, again, it's an 80s throwback, and so the graphics are sort of 80s-ish when oh, remember he has the his hearts, blaster. Remember oh, the hearts, hearts on her arms. Oh my God, there's so, so <laughs> many good throwbacks. Like he said, the, this is my gnome stick, obviously a nod to uh, Army 80s, of Darkness. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, actually, and then, I guess Army of Darkness was early 90s, but nonetheless, a nonetheless, series that started it in the 80s. And yeah. then, yeah. Well, and we don't want to say exactly what the hearts refer to, mm -hmm. but at one point there was a, a group of hearts that was very much Zelda. Like in totally. the Zelda games, you have like 20 hearts to go down. And, and something someone... tied in with those hearts is a, a fail for me. Just, you know, the fate of a certain character, but I'm not going to reveal yeah, we it. Won't, we yeah, we won't review, reveal it, but, but even so, it was just... It was just a phenomenal, phenomenal film, and and again, I'm gonna let you cover the Feo. You you handled it very well. I just I struggle to find the Malo and the Feo in this movie, which is why it left it so happy. Yeah. It leapfrogged over Ant Man for me yeah. because Ant Man it, is still a close second, still and I loved super it. Fun. But the fact that it was a big budget movie that had a lot of money behind it. And this brought me back again. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's here's the way I thought of describing it after we watched it. It took my 34 year old mind and put it in my 12 year old body. Yeah. Like it brought me back to when I was 12, but I appreciated it on all the levels of my 34 year old brain. I watched it with the type of just fascination and enthusiasm that the Turbo Kid was reading those comics with. 100%. Totally. That's a good way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, there's a little bit of, of like convenience. You know, he happens across a certain thing that. And I was thinking of mentioning that during the Malo, you know, but I guess that ties in with the fact that the story, it's, and there were certain aspects we've seen before, but the fact that they put such a unique, and just, you know, you just you gotta know. roll with it. You, you just gotta to. roll with it. Even the things that might come across as Malo, you're okay with. You are. Because it fits the movie that they made. It, it was does. just fantastic. Yes, and that is a good way for us to wrap things up. A fantastic film. Turbo Kid was tremendous, and I think we have a we have a concurrence here. It was our favorite of the summer. Ironically, yep. for the last film that we reviewed this Very summer. last film of the summer, I would yeah. say. Yep, 100%. Yep. I ended up knocking it home. The home run came at the end, so as, as it should. You can't ask so. for something more than that for summer I movies. Know. Damn result. Mm -hmm. So I extend a grande gracias to all you peeps for tuning in, and especially to the makers of Turbo Kid for actually producing a movie and that made Lawrence us so Love. happy. Yes. Thank you to you because yes. you're amazing. It was a star turning performance and I'm so stoked to see anything else that she is in. I will seek it out. Anything she's done previously and totally from worth here it. on out. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes, great actress and their actor, should I say. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, I gotta extend the grande gracias to Cecil and let him plug the show that we do together that actually covers way more gore and way more craziness than in this particular film. So. Of course he's referring to the horror show, which we have at www.thehorrorshowchannel.com channel.com or youtube.com slash the horror show channel. We do horror movie reviews, we do how to's, we do comedy sketches, we do celebrity interviews, horror game let's plays, uh, all kinds of good stuff and we're actually in the process of uh, pre-production for our second yet biggest and hopefully best horror short that we will have come up with based on, well I should say not based on, but inspired by yeah. a Stephen King co-created character named Skinner Sweet for the American Vampire comic series. And I'm gonna be the fang banger for it, guys. So. Well, the main one, yes, yeah, absolutely. keep an eye out for me. So yes, check us out. We're at Horror Show 666 on Twitter, The Horror Show 666 on Instagram, at Horror Show 666 on Periscope as well, because we yeah. do tend to Periscope, and we will be Periscoping at Scarefest coming up. So yes, that's check us out in Lexington, the Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky, yeah, September 11th to the 13th. Check out our Periscope because we will be bringing you live horror convention coverage. It's going to be amazing. So stoked for it, and I am so stoked to connect with all of you if you get the opportunity. I'm at Jaime and Fuego on all social media sectors. I'm waiting. I'm lurking. Let's talk cinema. Let's talk music. I do a little bit of both. So once again, a grande gracias to all of you guys, and I look forward to talking about the fall movies with you very, very soon. So until then, adios, cinemigos. <laughs> My turbo blaster! <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good one. She could have been more like the real Turbo Rider. But she could totally be Turbo Kid.